Hello, this is Chunggyeong Park, and let me start the YCC news special this month. This month, I will introduce historical characters who try to save our culture and tradition. From the past, people did lots of works to save our culture and tradition. Because of their dedication, we can experience and see our tradition nowadays. Now, let's find out about our ancestors who did their best to let their descendants enjoy traditional cultures and encourage the people's pride of their own culture. The person I'll introduce is King Sejong. King Sejong is the fourth king of Joseon Dynasty. King Sejong is known as the most well-established king throughout the Joseon Dynasty. Also, many students in Korea want to model him as their role model. He was a very smart man and took care of his people very much. Even though he was the third prince, his cleverness captivated the king's sight. After he became the king, he did lots of things for his people based on his interest and expertise of many other areas. Representatively, rain measuring tool and astronom astronomical observation tool was invented in his reign. Also, he studied and supplied the easier way of rice farming. Because of this, the output of the rice plunged a lot. Moreover, he organized the palace music used in royal ceremonies, such as rituals and parties. But the most outstanding thing he did is that he made Hangul on his own. We will now have a look on Hangul, why and how it was made, and how it is used nowadays. Joseon, where King Sejong ruled, was a country that had a status system. Only noblemen could read and write Chinese characters. Peasants had no time nor money to study those complex and difficult letters. This is why King Sejong determined to make Hangul. Hangul is the alphabet that everyone can learn easily and quickly. There is even a saying like this in Korea, when learning Hangul, if you start learning it in morning, then you can master it in that night. Like this, common people could also read and write just same as noblemen. At first, they weren't same of course, because the privilege only for noblemen was going away. Resistance of the noblemen were fierce. King Sejong proclaimed Hangul anyway, but it wasn't welcomed a lot from people at first. But after peasants learned reading and writing Hangul, they also could be free from unequality from noblemen and them to some degree. Originally, peasants or slaves were swindled a lot from noblemen because they couldn't read the written contract. By Hangul, peasants could express their thoughts and feelings more fluently than past when they didn't know how to read and write. Hangul was made by King Sejong on his own. Some story says that princes and princesses participated making Hangul, but it is not true. Making the whole new alphabet alone, King Sejong got weaker and weaker, and finally he went almost blind. Hangul is also known that its shape was modeled after the window frames, but it is also not true. The story is a false rumor made by the Japanese during the Japanese colonial era. They wanted to degrade, downgrade the pride of Korean people and break off the bond among Koreans. So they made some false rumors like this to discourage Koreans. Actually, not like the rumor, Hangul was created very systematic, systematically. The consonants of Hangul were shaped after the vocal organs, especially the vocal organ that is used when pronouncing the very consonants. The vowels of Hangul were shaped after the sky, earth, and human. This has the ide ideological meanings. The sky, earth, and human is an important kind in Confucianism, and it means that these three have to make harmony to make the peaceful world. The feature of Hangul is written in a book called Hunmin Jeongeum. 
Hun Min Jongum means the right sound that teaches the people. Hun Min Jongum is separated in two kinds of books. One is called Hun Min Jongum Ye Ibun. It is written by King Sejong and describes why Hangul was made. The other is called Hun Min Jongum Here Bun. It describes how Hangul was made and how it is used. It describes Korean grammar too. Before this book was found, the principle of Hangul wasn't clear. There were many theories such as Hangul was made after the principle of Mongolian language, but it is not true, like I introduced. This book, Hun Min Jongum, was disappeared in Japanese colonial era, and it was found it was found out that Tan Yong Pil, cultural properties collector, was keeping it. Thanks for him. Now we can know how Hangul was made and who made Hangul. Because this book exists, Hangul could be the only alphabet throughout the world that its creator and principal is known. Nowadays, Hangul is evaluated as the scientific language that applied many scientific principles. Also, it is very convenient language to express infinite kinds of pronunciation in very limited alphabets. Hangul only consists 19 consonants and 21 vowels. Consonants are based on only 5 basic consonants, and vowels are based on 3 basic forms. We can find out that Hangul is a very simple alphabet that is easy to learn. This made Korea as a country that literacy rate almost 0%. Also, Jia Jia tribe in Ind Indonesia, which don't have their own alphabet, uses Hangul to write down their language. Also, UNESCO, where it works for reducing literacy rates, introduced Hangul for them who cannot read or write. But Hangul wasn't a used actively in the past. It was because of the resistance of noblemen in Joseon Dynasty and oppressed by Japanese in Japanese colonial era. Hangul had been organized by Homer Herbert in Japanese colonial era and now we are using what, is he, what he organized. Now we all know that Hangul is very sophisticated and scientific alphabet and have pride on it. So why don't we use Hangul more properly and preciously? This is end of the YCC news special this month. Thank you for watching.